I'm Mark DeRosa, and welcome to Play Ball at Home, presented by Scotts. On Saturday's show, we're gonna meet up with a ton of current St. Louis Cardinal stars. But today, I wanna take you back and meet up with one of my old teammates. He got it done on the mound and at the plate. Let's visit with Rick Ankeel. Rick Ankeel makes quick work of the Brewers. When he has that good curveball, he can be tough. This is his best start this year. Rick Ankeel, who used to throw in the upper 90s as a pitcher, just threw a strike at the third base. I'm not saying his debut, but I mean, there's no one that's started a career as a pitcher and then become a hitter as well as he has other than Babe Ruth. All right, I'm here with Rick, Rick Ankeel. Great to catch up with an old teammate right here. And I say this to everybody I've been around. They asked me to name some of the best, just most talented baseball players I've ever been around. My time in 2009 with Rick Ankeel, I mean, the guy in VP was hitting bombs. We'd play catch in the outfield. I could hear that ball whistling by me. So I want you to go and rewind for a little bit with me. What were you like as a kid? It, was it baseball through and through? Did you play other sports? Kind of take me through kind of your maturation up and through high school. Uh, I grew up in South Florida. So I kind of grew up a beach kid. I grew up surfing. Um, I gravitated towards baseball. I was actually a pretty goofy kid, except for on the baseball field. Um, uh, luckily for me around here, down here, we have sunshine, you know, year round. So I basically, the only organized sport I ever played was baseball. I went out for football my freshman year of high school. I was out there for maybe two weeks and I was like, all right, this isn't for me. Um, and it was just baseball all the way through. So, um, you know, I, but I did play a ton of other sports, just not organized. I played a ton of basketball, played a ton of football in the neighborhood. Um, but baseball, I was by far better at. You know, it's funny. We, we give kids like drills to do, like tips of the day. And one thing that I always used to do, you talk about being a beach kid. One thing I always used to do, I grew up in New Jersey with the above ground pool. But I used to get in there and kind of go through pitching motions and hitting motions. You feel like being in the water kind of helped you like balance wise, body awareness wise? I definitely think it helped my arm strength. Um, all the paddling that you get from surfing, yeah. um, the arm strength that you build. And, and when I think back to Little League, uh, all the kids that were surfers pretty much threw harder than everybody else. I mean, it was across the board. And I, I remember talking to another teammate of yours. I think you guys, maybe you guys played together. It was Ryan Klesko. Um, yeah. He told me he grew up surfing and he used to throw in the low to mid nineties, if I'm not mistaken. So um, all the paddling definitely helped me out, yes. Yeah, that, it's funny because we talk, we try and tell kids that like for myself, you know, I was football, baseball, basketball, and I felt like every sport kind of really helped me in baseball. So got to believe being on the beach, in the sand, in the surf, doing all that paddling certainly helped you. I mean, take me through, I mean, in Little League, high school, I don't think anyone got any hits off you. <laughs> There's no many. Not many, but there was a few. Uh, but I was small. I didn't grow. I was. Um, I was always pretty good. I mean, I made my all-star teams. I wasn't the best kid in little league, but I was good. Um, and it was kind of that way all the way until I would say my sophomore year when I grew. And then I went from throwing 86 to 94, 96. Um, I got invited to play USA baseball, yeah. and we had a coach by the name of Bill Olson um, who taught me, who took my little rinky dink curveball to the curveball that I took to the big league. So. You know, my junior, senior year, I had the same curveball in high school that I took into the show. So that's, it, it got fun. I want people to understand, you were a guy who never got hit. Even in the yep. big, as, as a young, talented guy, you're just oozing with confidence. The game comes easy, and then you just lose command, right? Yep. And for this game, it's a game of failure. Like, I know you went through some tough times, but take me through kind of like for the kids at home, the mindset of picking yourself up off the mat and kind of reinventing yourself. You know, you go through the throwing thing. I think the hardest part about, we'll call it the yips, the monster, or just losing yeah. your ability to throw strikes is you really can't point at like, oh, I hurt my shoulder and it's not working. Um, and you're kind of this odd person out and there's not really an answer. Nobody really has an answer. So that's a really hard thing to, to deal with. Like you mentioned, because I had just breezed through, not that I didn't work hard, I worked my tail off, but I, you know, the numbers uh, were just happening. The success was coming as fast as I could open a door and let it flow in. Um, so, you know, going through 
what I went through mentally um, with the throwing stuff, because I battled that for four years, five years, um, and then having the option to go over and to pick up and hit, right? When I looked at it, um, it was like, you know what? I've been, I felt like I've been trapped in a mental prison with this, the throwing stuff that the opportunity to go take the field again and be a position player, even though nobody in the world was gonna give me a chance to make it, was giving me a chance to make it, was like, I have, I'm in a no-lose situation. There's no way it could be as bad as the throwing stuff. Like, I, I remember showing up the next day with a smile on my face, like, oh my gosh, I don't have to worry about throwing a strike. Well, I, I'm not giving you lip service here. I played eight different teams, play with a million different guys. Like, you are one of my favorite teammates because you truly cared and you wanted good for all the guys that were in that locker room. What, where did where does that come from? Because I tell my 10 new travel team all the time, want your buddies to get knocks. Don't want to yeah. be a player, want to share the glory. So where did that come from? I think a lot of that came from me being so successful early. And when you're standing out there and you're having that, that much success um, and you want to win, you realize you need all those guys on the field to win. You can't just be you. So if you want to win a championship, you need to pick your guys up and be there and be positive. I love that. What's the best, like, what's your best piece of advice that you've given? Like, what's your go-to? The game? Like, having fun? Yes, yes. Um, exactly. I'll, Take it to for the kids at home. I'll, okay, I'll give one for the kids for getting better. And this is when you're out there playing catch in the field. Like, don't just go through the motions. If you're going to play catch with the guy, try to hit him in his hat, try to hit him in his shoulder, pick something on, play a game. Make it, make it a competition. If I hit your whatever, your, your D on your shirt more than you, then you owe me a, a you know, a Coke or whatever. Absolutely. Something like that. Yeah, I'll keep go. it fun and make it competitive. All right, Rick, hitting us with some great advice right there. You know who else got some great advice and has got a question for you? It's our Chevy Playball reporter, Drew. So we're gonna bring him in. What's up, Drew? Hey, Rick. Hey, Mark. So for the kids who are at home waiting for their baseball season to start or begin, um, is there one drill or one thing that you always did that you think could help them? One thing um, I always did was, especially if I was just by myself, is I'd go outside with a tennis ball and rocket it off the side of my house, whether I hit the ground first and let it hit the wall and then bounce or threw it against the wall and let it bounce back to me. Um, to just practice on fielding line drives, ground balls, catching the ball. Um, I can't say that my mom always loved that one because it was always, she could hear the ball hitting off the house, but you know, to me, it's worth it, so. For me, Drew, I'm gonna double off of what Rick just said. I wasn't a guy who, you know, had room to really work on my craft offensively. So I like to do a lot of different things. Like I was big on laying on my bedroom floor, whether it was a football, baseball, it didn't matter, basketball. I wanted to like spin the baseball as close as I could to the ceiling in my bedroom, uh, in my bedroom without hitting it. And I wanted to get perfect at that. I wanted to come down on my right eye, come down on my left eye. Like I wanted to be able to pinpoint and throw a ball with accuracy like I was playing darts. All right, man, the time's up with Rick Ankeel right here. Honestly, check out this guy's career. What he did was nothing short of amazing. Reinventing himself, one of the best and most talented baseball players I ever had the opportunity to share in a clubhouse. Rick, thank you so much for the time. Thanks, D-Row. Appreciate it, man. Love it. That's it for Play Ball at Home, presented by Scott. Make sure to join me this Saturday morning to catch up with St. Louis Cardinal stars Adam Wainwright, Jack Flaherty, and Matt Carpenter. Until then, stay safe and keep playing ball.